What up guys, so I got a question about butterfly guards. So a guy sent me a message, he's having trouble with his butterfly guard sweeps, and he asks me for some advice. And again, I don't know what his actual rolling looks like, so I have no clue what's going on with his particular butterfly sweep. Uh, I told him to send me a video, which we'll see if that comes through, and if it does, we'll make one specifically for that. But I figured what I would do with you guys today is show you um, a handful of reasons as to why your butterfly guards sweeps might suck a little bit, right? Um, and how we can change that and make them better. Um, again, there's a lot of different ways to play Butterfly Guard. What I'm gonna show you today is the way that I play it, what's been really useful to me. Um, and hopefully this will give you a better like conceptual idea as to how the Butterfly Guard position works and how to use it. Um, and hopefully this is useful to you guys. So let's jump into the video. All right guys, so one reason that your butterfly guard might suck, and I see this a lot of times with my students who are new to the position, is they sort of sit like this. Now what's wrong with this, right? Well, you wanna think about this. When you're in this initial phase of like working in for your grips and everything else, you wanna have your butt behind your head, elbows are in close, that your arms, uh, armpits are not open, and your head is upright. We don't want our head to be down here where I can get caught in guillotine chokes. I don't wanna be wide open where he can wrap around my waist. But more, most importantly, I don't want to be here. Because like right now, if Mike just pushes me a little bit, I can't stay up. But if I'm here, Mike, get on your toes and put all your weight on me. Like really lean into me. No problem, right? He'll might push me back, but I'm not going to fall. And so when you're playing this initial position, you wanna make sure that we're here, we've got our sticky hooks, we're in these positions, being able to fight for hand grips and everything else, but my body is leaning slightly forward this puts me in a stronger position to hold the spot so that i can set up whatever grips i'm going to go into now let's talk about the sweeps all right guys so one of the reasons why you may struggle with butterfly guard is you don't pull people off of their base so what i mean by this is when you think about the way that a butterfly guard sweep works uh for instance when i'm here watch the way that mike's body is going right um, when I go for a sweep, one of the things I'm always looking to do is pull him off of his base. So if I'm here, I'm not going to just like roll to the side and then try to kick. I mean, maybe I might be able to do this, but instead what I want to do is I want to be able to go back and pull Mike off of his base. Look what's happening to Mike now. His base is loaded on me, right? Um, this is one of my rules in jiu-jitsu that I have is basically... If I'm trying to like off balance people, especially with different sweeps, I'm trying to get them loaded over my belly button. Likewise, if Mike's passing, he does not want to be loaded over my belly button, right? Um, you can think about this, stand up real fast if you would, Mike. Let's say Mike and I are passing here. If Mike is behind my belly button, it's very hard for me to lift him. If he goes past my belly button, very easy to lift him. Now this doesn't always translate to every position, but in this case, it does go with um, the butterfly guard. So where do we, how do we pull the person off that base? Well, the big thing is that we're gonna use a pull side arm and a, uh, the hook to match, right? So whenever you're doing like an over under sweep or over over sweep, you're going to have a pull side. In this case, let's say it's the under hook, it's here. It could also be an over hook where we pull the person. It could even be a belt grip here on the back. This grip here, its focus is not trying to like do anything other than pulling this person on top of me. Now, at the same time, my leg, I pull that knee up to my chest because what I want to have happen is I want to have this person loaded with me. So this foot locks in place, it's very sticky against the inner thigh and pulls up here to my chest just like so. And what this does is this allows me to support a lot of weight. So for instance, if Mike, come around this way if you would, sir, so we can see this leg. If I get the underhook right here, okay, and I get underneath and I pull my belt his base, I'm locked here, I'm pulling him with me, I'm pulling this leg up to my chest here, Mike can put all of his weight on me and I'm perfectly fine with this. If this leg goes out even an inch or two, just a couple inches, drop your weight on this hip. I, I'm not going to be able to hold that up. Now watch this. Drop your weight. No problem. So one of the things that I notice when I go over butterfly guard with people is they don't really focus on pulling a person. They try to do a lot of different things, but whenever you're doing a sweep, like an over-under sweep, over-over sweep, whatever it is from the uh, butterfly guard, we want to focus on using one of our sides to pull this person up on top of us and getting them loaded so it makes it easier to sweep them. So another reason why people struggle with their butterfly guard is they don't properly trap the arm. So 
we just talked about how to pull someone on top of us using the pull side. Well, if we're pulling on one side, what are we doing on the other, right? Well, I'm trapping the arm. You know, and one of the mistakes that I see people will make is they'll get here and they'll get this really high overhook like this as an example. Now, this high overhook is really good for pulling someone on top of us. It's not good for taking away the arm and trapping because if I do this, he can literally just post his hand out. I see this happen all the time. When we're going to a particular side, let's say that I'm going in this case to my left here, my job is to get a grip and that traps his lower arm. Now, this, there are exceptions to all these rules, but in most cases, we're trapping this lower arm so that as I roll to the side and get ready to sweep him, he is not able to post and defend. So, when you get your pull side grip here, ready to go, when you're sweeping, you want to be thinking about trapping the arm. Now, your trap typically needs to be focused elbow around the elbow and tricep or below. So, what this could look like is instead of a high overhook, we go for a low overhook where I'm trapping at his elbow. If he tries to post his hand out, can't do it. I can also use a C grip, back of the tricep, pinch, can't post his hand out. I can also use a wrist grip here and pinch. I could even do an underhook where let's say if he posts, I can scoop underneath here and catch. But again, it's all focused on the lower part of the arm here because this is what I'm trying to take away off the mat. I'm trying to take his hand away so he can't post. And so again, people don't pull, but they also don't focus on trapping correctly uh, in a lot of cases. And then when they try to sweep, the person is able to put their hand on the mat and stop them. Another reason why people's butterfly guards aren't optimal is that when they go for the sweep, they end up going really flat. This was a problem I had when I was getting started with butterfly guard back in like 2004. Um, I would get into the position, I would rear back and just try to really muscle through it and kick people, but I'd be flat on my back. So what it would look like is I would get the grips that I needed and instead of getting to a nice strong angle, I would just kind of turn and go Ugh! And like I'm trying to use this big extension, but if you look at my back, I'm almost flat right? That's going to be a problem. If you think about the angle this puts me in, my leg is here. Now there are times where you can sweep flat off your back depending on the grips and everything else. But a lot of times for me, what's been much more useful, especially up against big dudes, is being at a strong angle and not getting flat on my back. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use this little cross leg idea that I have. Um, again, it can be done a couple different ways. The simplest way that I show my guys a lot of times is if I get my grips here and I'm ready to sweep, but right now I'm forward, right? Because I need to be in this position to hold the spot. I'll take the leg. So if I'm trapping the tricep and I'm going to my left right now, I will take my left leg and I will cross it right in front of his leg. So what it looks like is you're here. Now, what this does is this now allows me to move and get into an angle. So instead of being in a situation where I'm here and I have to rock back and try to kick, I'm now able to adjust without posting my hand. And back in the day when we first started learning butterfly, we would be told post the hand to scoot in. But the problem with that is now I'm taking a hand away. Now I'm trying to re-grip, get the grip. I can get my grips in position and I can use my legs to adjust. And now I'm in a spot where as I rock to my side, my leg is in such a better angle to actually kick this person over opposed to straight up. So here's what that looks like. Go over this side of your mic. Train's going, but we're gonna keep rolling. So from here, I get the underhook, overhook, whatever. And again, instead of falling straight back, I'll take this leg, cut it in, and then I will fall back to my tricep and my back, my lateral side, and then pull the leg up. And I can come right up with the sweep. Uh, it's a much stronger way to go for the sweeps because you're at that angle. So guys, this one is really important. It's something I see people struggle with at more of an advanced level. When they go against someone who has a good base, maybe like a wrestler or something like that, what'll end up happening is they do all the stuff right. They get their grips, they have their arms trapped, they get their angle, and then when they go, they really try to muscle this kick early. And then what happens is, if the person's got a decent base, he might base out and start riding out, and then they lose power out of their leg. Because what happens is, if I go for my kick too early, my leg is now overextended and it's very easy for him to drop his hips. Again, going back to this idea of pulling, I'm keeping this leg tight. The, the closer this leg is to my body, the stronger I am. And if I use the kick too early, my leg loses power. So what we do with the butterfly is we use our bottom leg here to drive up. So instead of thinking about butterfly guard as this big like, I'm just gonna kick this guy, you think about it as you're going, 
you press off of your bottom leg, your bottom toe, and as you're coming up, you can stay with the person and you will develop the, the intuition to know whether this person's riding out the position where they're trying to base out and you have to stay with them and not use your kick or they're losing balance and you go for the kick. So I'll give you an example of both. Let's say Mike's here with me. We'll look at his, his legs here. The first time I'll, I'll utilize the kick because he's not giving me the same base that uh, he, he was earlier. So if I get here, my leg's still pressing the ground, boom. I kick, he's losing balance. Now watch this. Let's say he's actually, you know, he's giving me like a decent wrestler base, which Mike has. Okay, I get him over here, and as I'm going, he's starting to ride this out. There's still tension on my leg. I can feel it. So I'm not going to kick here. Instead, I'm going to ride this up, ride this up. And so you got to be able to do both. You got to be able to kick, of course, but you've got to be able to ride it out. And again, whether you're kicking or not, this bottom leg needs to be pressed into the ground. And you want to rely on the kick as like the finishing touch to the sweep, not like the, the not some big powerful movement to make it work. So guys, another thing that people miss with their butterfly guard is they miss this focus on the upper body. And again, they get really focused on the legs, the kick, all that stuff. Um, but the upper body is important with this, okay? Let me give you an example. With Mike here, okay, I've got him in position. If I go into this sweep, what I'm looking to do is not just like try to kick, pull the leg up, all this stuff, but watch that as I go to the side and I'm falling back, I trap his arm, my underhook here, begins to go up. It's basically a big flare of the elbow. And look what his shoulders are doing. He's already beginning to tilt. Now what's this gonna do? This is gonna make his base off balance and it's very easy now to sweep him. Let's say that this was a, a double over sweep because an underhook, overhook, you know, it's one thing. But let's say we do a double over sweep. So we got our high elbow, our high underhook on one side, a lower underhook on one side. This way I can pull with one and trap with the other. And then as I get ready to go, what am I gonna do? Look at his shoulders. They're tilted. This makes it so much easier to sweep. And so when you think about the butterfly guard, you really wanna get focused on the upper body. As you're going and you're going to the side, you really wanna focus on trying to get the tilt of their shoulders. It makes the position so much easier. So instead of just trying to pull this person back and lifting them, as you're going back to the side, we really start to like turn and almost kind of do a side crunch. And I use this analogy, I'm like, think about driving a big truck like this. Now again, no, but I don't know that this is how guys with big trucks drive, but this big idea, this big turn of the upper body uh, creates this spot with their upper body where their shoulders are tilted and it makes the sweep so much smoother, so much easier. All right, guys, one last reason why your butterfly guard may not be the best is that you don't have multiple attacks that work together. So as an example, uh, with your sweeps, right? Um, you wanna do this with pretty much any part of your jiu-jitsu. You want there to always be something next, and you should always be thinking about this. Like, what's the next thing that I'm gonna do after this happens, right? Well, let's say I get into a position and I go for it, and I get a really good attempt on this sweep, but I just can't quite finish it. Well, instead of just stopping, Okay, I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm going to go with this person, right? So for instance, if he's here, he's probably trying to drop his hip, so I'll go with it and kick it back. Now, he's off balance right now, and I could just go back to a regular butterfly guard, and then I could try the same sweep again, right? Or what I could do is, is I could chain this together and follow him up. And so one of the things you wanna do with your sweeps and any of your attacks, but we're focusing on sweeps mainly for this video, is have multiple attacks going side to side, right? Uh, again, with this one, this is one of my favorites, is going for an underhook sweep or overhook sweep, doesn't matter, but we go for a sweep to one side, he defends. As I get him here, I'm gonna kick him back. He's trying to drop his weight anyway, which is helpful for me. Now I go from a, a low overhook to high overhook so I can get the pull, and I switch from the underhook which again is a pulling grip for me here, and switch to a trapping grip over top, and then I can switch and then follow him up for a sweep. And again, that one, that one-two combo, I have lots of different ways that I use that, but that one-two combo is super useful and super powerful because again, if I'm taking him this way, he's trying to bring his body back down here, and I can follow that momentum and get the sweep. What up guys, so those are some tips to help you with your butterfly guard. So if you put those things into practice, what I just showed you today, 
I guarantee your butterfly guard is going to be more effective. Your sweeps are going to be better. Um, and those are some of the more important tips, for, at least for me, in the way that I use butterfly guard and some things that like when I think back when I started using the position, you know, over 20 years ago, and then now like some of the important things that I've learned, those are some important lessons. Um, by the way, guys, if you're watching this video, if you would like to get an ebook that I wrote, which goes into 12 different strategies for open rolling, open mats, so that you can get more from your training, um, check the links down below. It would be really useful for those of you, if you're training, if you feel like you lack a goal, if you feel like you're getting stuck in a sticky point in your game, like you're not getting any better. Um, basically, the idea is to add some focus to those open rolls, those open training, to get more from the training so you improve faster, right? Um, again, if you want more details on that, and get my daily email, check the links down below. But hopefully the video was useful to you guys, and thanks for the questions that you guys send. I'll talk to you next time.